the Pop Top Builder series. An in-depth look into the process, timeline, and outcome of converting a Jeep Cherokee into a hand-built camper. A compact, capable, and travel-ready rig. Fiberglass mold making. Bring the wildest of ideas to life, with minimal tech or tools required. Hands-on work that any DIY enthusiast can pick up with time. The end result? Let's get down to the details. The original build arose from a retired Westphalia camper. This top had been roughly retrofitted to the Jeep prior, but this go-around would be used as a starting point to a full redesign. The VW pop top would be reshaped and then replicated through fiberglass mold making. With the old top pulled, I went at it with some ballpark measurements and sliced this old Westie to a newly perfected fit. You can see here just how much was trimmed off the original Westie top. Following the trimming, a little prep went a long way to clean up the fiberglass edges. The camper top was mated back up to the Jeep and double checked for fitment along all edges. This trim fit well, but the next issue to solve was the open rear profile. When fiberglass has an open face with no flange, it loses a great deal of structure. This lack of stiffness when it would likely distort when reproduced. This rear profile needed locked in place before mold making could really begin. With a new set of measurements, I headed back outside. I started by cutting and fitting a lumber crossbeam at the base. This would square things up for good. I had an idea of what form and measurements the rear profile would take and proceeded to put it onto paper templates, and thin ply scrap. I chopped and sanded a few more components. These would work as stringers to keep the profile symmetrical and aligned. Altogether, the stringers and cross brace would form a skeleton for the rear profile to shape around. You'll see in the next video exactly how this brings a custom fiberglass shape to life. Each stringer was spaced evenly and would have shaping foam constructed around it to allow for flexibility in a custom profile while maintaining square and even measurements. The process came to mind from watching surfboard shapers work, using the centerline stringer to provide a base plane for the contours to follow. Instead of blind shaping, an identifiable base shape is given to the surrounding foam. Keep watching to see this come to life. With a bit more slicing and dicing, the skeleton was finally affixed to the rear end of the top and snugged in place. I took time measuring and spacing each of these stringers to save headaches when later shaping the foam. Working around the 2x3 crossbeam and snug skeleton, I tied everything together with a backboard and a few screws. It's just about ready for foam. The 
Some more thin ply board was trimmed, painted, and waxed to box in the foam pouring area. Before that was affixed, some additional reinforcements came to life to hold everything in place. I built this rear end to be modular in nature so that it could easily be removed and protected while the rest of the top would see further custom work. With everything finally tied together, I boxed in the rear profile once and for all. Duct tape would take care of most all the seams and crevices between components. Shaping foam would stay right where it needed to. You can see here how the skeleton and foam pore structure would take shape. Hot glue worked great to secure these sheets in place. Strong enough, yet provides for a quick release down the road. Two-part polyurethane pour foam was then used to fill in around the wooden stringers. This stuff expands a good bit and is more consistent than most any spray foam. It can be sanded and cut quite well. The foam itself is a simple 50-50 mix and quite easy to pour. I went with this material instead of polyester block foam as it can seamlessly work itself around unweldy shapes and curves. Because only the outer edge would need sanded down, I filled the core with scrap to limit the volume of foam required. A last coat of release wax, some glue to hold things in place, and the foam pour continued. It's best to pour this all in one batch for consistent density. It expanded and expanded some more. So much so that the outer sheets began to bulge and were taped back in place to keep shape. The first chapter was done, and custom shaping could really begin. We'll leave that for the next episode. Stay tuned by subscribing and turning on notifications. As always, find more build references, links, and content in the description below. Until next time!